What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here, talking today about my one problem with the PlayStation 4. I think it's pretty obvious that I like this console a lot. It's selling well because it has so many amazing games. Just in the last seven days, we freaking got God of War, which is a utter masterpiece. It's got great storytelling, phenomenal combat, just so much stuff to really suck you in and get you invested. But the more thousands of hours I spend on this console, the more I feel like there's one giant flaw that nobody at Sony wants to talk about, and that's backwards compatibility. So look at the competition right now. The Nintendo is probably getting some sort of virtual console, hopefully in the next year, and the Xbox One is doing everything it possibly can to bring amazing classics forward in time. They've come up with basically every game for the Xbox 360, and now almost 20 games from the original Xbox are playable on their newest hardware. That's phenomenal, and it just makes me realize that it is a huge missed opportunity when it comes to the PlayStation, because the PS4 is really powerful and could easily run this stuff, either uh, emulated or with the actual physical discs. Now, a counter-argument I hear a lot is, well, they have PlayStation Now. They have this service you can pay for to stream all their best games of the past. So. I try and be as open-minded as possible. I feel like since my job is reviewing games, you have to be able to go into any situation and hope it'll surprise you. So I spent all of today and all of yesterday actually playing with PlayStation Now, and it is really bad. This is a service that is so bizarre to me. I'm guessing you've probably never tried it, because from most of the numbers I've read, it seems like a really unpopular service, and now that I've actually gotten my own hands on it, I can see why. So as you're seeing from this gameplay here, this is the basic menu. Uh, well, it's sort of cool, I guess. It's a humongous library of hundreds of games that are both popular and lesser known. It looks like most of the stuff is PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 3, with a couple PlayStation 4 games thrown in. Now, this is kind of cool, but the real issues begin to arise when you actually go into the games themselves. The way PlayStation Now works is it is you accessing a server. Your PlayStation 4 is basically just a modem to connect to an online service. It reads your different controller commands and puts them into the game. And because of this, there's a little bit of a delay. Now, when you're playing something that's a little bit slower pace, it's not as noticeable. When I was going around in Silent Hill, this was, it was playable at least, but I kept noticing something that was really bad, which is that the resolution was awful. I mean, let me zoom in on this a bit here. You can see so many different like rectangles in this mist. What the heck? This is a game that ran so easily on the PlayStation 2 and the original Xbox. Why is it that you're having any amount of trouble streaming this? I have incredibly good internet plugged directly into my console and it still looks like this. And the situation gets even worse if you're playing a game that actually requires reaction speed like Sonic or a first person shooter like Killzone. Now the reason I'm going so in depth about PlayStation Now is because this is the service that they keep saying is the reason we don't have full backwards compatibility. They always respond, we don't need to have our classics coming forward because the service PlayStation Now will exist. There is an option for the hardcore gamers. However, that is so stupid to me, and I hate to use such a disrespectful term, but it comes down to the fact that PlayStation Now is A, overpriced, because it is $20 a month for this paltry service, and B, it is not at all what we're actually asking for. Having a select amount of retro games playable on modern hardware isn't what we're looking for. We're looking for the true format, the original games presented in the most honest way possible, with clear visuals. And as far as I can see it, there is only one main way to handle that, and it's actually selling your games digitally. Put them in the PlayStation Store. You did with this with the PlayStation 3 and it worked so well. I rebought a lot of games just because, well, I'm somebody who wants to try and support the original studios. If I saw a game on sale for $2 or $3, even if I already owned it, 
on uh, on a physical disc, I sometimes actually buy it on the PlayStation 3 just so I can play it again and, and basically show that I wanted a sequel or maybe a remaster. The fact that that does not exist at all in any form on the PlayStation 4 is so odd. The closest example of that is the PS2 games, and those are so scattershot. I like that you have every single Grand Theft Auto, but where are the weirder games? Where is stuff like Kuon or some good, really good shooters? It just seems like you guys really randomly select what will and won't be on there. Now, I do know that there is a big roadblock to this, which is the only way games are able to be put in this store is if the original developers give you uh, permission, but why aren't you as as a company pushing that harder? This could make your console even more popular to give people more options that they grew up loving. Now, I have here a couple random PS1 games and specifically they're all phenomenal. But I want to talk about uh, Final Fantasy VIII because this is one literally a hundred different people over the course of the last two years have asked me uh, in person and over the internet and sometimes even while I'm like doing a random interview on a smaller podcast why isn't this on the PlayStation 4? Now the reason they say this is because at this point we have Final Fantasy 9 on the PS4 which is a nice uh, upscaled version of the original game we have Final Fantasy 7 completely remastered looking good and you're working on the remake of course why don't we have Final Fantasy VIII? It's almost become this example of how little Sony is listening to people. Fans are clamoring for this. People are willing to pay $15 for this right this second. I mean, that's all I'm asking for is more options. The PlayStation 4 has tons of just top-notch modern games from Spider-Man, God of War, GTA 5, survival horror stuff that just blows your freaking mind. The PlayStation has amazing options. I'm just wanting more of them. This stuff should not just disappear. People want to play Parasite Eve. Right this second, there are people with cash in hand who just want to go back and fight all these crazy cool monsters. So, here's what I'm getting at. I feel like Sony needs to realize that people are actually here. That there is a market for this. So, you really have two big paths at this point. Create backwards compatibility in a more reasonable fashion through your PlayStation Store or possibly even making it where we can actually put our discs in and it'll install an emulator sort of in the way the original Xbox does or the Xbox One does. Or option B, you maybe try and integrate it more properly into PlayStation Now. Personally, I... I really despise this service. I actually think it's pretty pathetic since they put in hundreds of millions of dollars of research to create PlayStation Now and it hardly functions. But I feel like if you're playing much older games like this, it has an even greater possibility of, of being everything that old school fans would imagine. Or the other choice is that you just continue to flat out ignore us. Don't you realize, look at the number of sales you're getting on the PS2 classics you have right now. I mean, I bet that stuff is moving like crazy. Even games that are probably lesser known, like some of the RPGs on there, I've bought every PS2 RPG on the PlayStation 4 store. I mean, even stuff I've beaten five times, like Rogue Galaxy, I bought again because it's so cool to have trophy support and the entire game rendered in 1080p on this nice shiny TV. I like having that on my bar right next to all my awesome modern games. But if you continue to ignore us, you're just losing money. As we get closer to possibly the PlayStation 5, I feel like this is going to be the line in the sand. The place where everybody is going to be establishing themselves. If these next consoles are supposed to be so much bigger and so much better, I think more choices on what to play is also just as important as how you play. Make it where we can actually enjoy everything you've ever had a hand on instead of just the most shiny, bright, beautiful stuff. But these have just been my thoughts. Please let me know in the comments down below if backwards compatibility is important to you as it is to me. Because as somebody who's absolutely obsessed with Final Fantasy and, and more specifically even Grandia because I feel like that's such an amazing hidden gem, it genuinely drives me nuts to see these just lost in the sands of time. 
we are people with money who are willing to talk about this stuff again, to go back through these journeys and, and spread the word to get more people to buy PlayStation 4s. And I guess it's theoretical that these things will never come back. But these have just been my random, rather rambly thoughts on backwards compatibility and my one big problem with the PlayStation 4. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But do me the biggest favor of all and keep dreaming. At this point, I've beaten God of War twice. This is my third playthrough and I'm playing it on the ultra hard difficulty. It is nuts. If you don't have this game yet, wow, it is, uh, it's not only fun, it, when it wants to beat you up, it really beats you up. <laughs> oh, hey, I was just playing a little bit of Grand Theft Auto on my Darth Vader PSP. Are you curious what I'm going to come out with next? Well, if you click this button, you'll be subscribed to be the first to know. Also, if you click over here and here, you can see my latest review and my latest top 10. I promise it was super good. Or it was really bad and I'm sure you can just make fun of me in the comments. Either way, it'll be a lot of fun. Thanks so much for watching.